I was wrong. And not in a bad way. I thought it would be eh, but it's been amazing. disappear real quick with this humidity guys Ooh, getting all fogged up <laughs> back well guys I am blown away like incredibly blown away a little over a month ago we built this huga culture bed I made a whole video about that um, I'll link it above and I had really low expectations this year. In the video talking about building this bed, I talked about how I was going to plant shallow rooted things, see how they did. I thought this year, I'm just gonna get it started, plant some annuals, plant some flowers, plant some greens, see how they do. Next year is really when the thing is gonna start to produce lots of food, and then in future years, it's gonna get better and better. I was wrong. And not in a bad way. I thought it would be Eh, but it's been amazing. That's basically a month of growth, guys, and during a time in our weather where it's been really wet, cool, not a lot of sun, yet this thing, this hugo culture bed, could care less. The drainage is amazing, and at the same time, the retention is great. I think I've only watered it once or twice. Um, really never needed to, and I've already harvested tons of greens off of this bed. In the next few days, I'm going to be harvesting our first few summer squash. Let me give you a little tour and update on the hugo culture bed. Let's start at this end, and we'll work our way down. So over here, we've got some beets down here that I transplanted. I started indoors. We have some poppies right there, um, some zinnias that are just about to come up, obviously lots of kale. We have some Egyptian walking onions that are getting ready to walk, a bachelor button that is blooming beautifully, definitely the most prolific bachelor button of any of the ones I've started. I've got some parsley, uh, let's see, some more beets, I have, I have lettuce, that actually volunteered over in my raised bed. Came back from seeds that had been scattered last year and I picked it from the raised bed and transplanted it over here in the hookah culture bed and it's producing nice beautiful heads. So I'm gonna need to harvest that soon before it starts to get too hot and start to bolt. I had a couple extra peanuts left after I planted them over in the main garden. So I actually planted a peanut right in here. That pretty little flower. Let's work our way up down the back of the bed. Now the back of the bed is less prolific than the front of the bed and that's just because the back of the bed doesn't get as much morning light and it gets a little bit blocked in the evening. But what I'm thinking is this will be a nice microclimate as it gets hotter in the summer. These kale and lettuces will bolt less easily than the stuff going on in the front. So it's a little bit of an experiment. So far it doesn't look like it's doing that because this lettuce right here is already getting ready to bolt. So we've got some really gorgeous kale in here, a poppy that's just about to flower. Uh, we've got some celery. And then on the top, on the top here, so we've got some kind of summer squash at the end. Right next to that, we have a ground cherry plant that is doing really well. It's pretty huge already. We've got a tomato plant that I just threw in here to see what it would do, and it's huge and producing tons of blossoms. Um, we've got a few cucumbers in here. They're my largest cucumbers and they will probably produce cucumbers before anything else. Let's work our way over to the front. So right here, we've got some more beets. These guys are putting off roots. We've got some zinnias, nasturtium, marigolds, more zinnias. Pull this guy off, he's dead. Some radishes back here. I'll just show you right here. This little guy's ready to be picked. More kale, beets, onions. It's kind of the same deal all the way around. Um, but as you can see on this side, things are much bigger and more established than on the other side. 
Uh, the curly kale on the side is doing really well. Um, it's finally starting to catch up, whereas these, I think this is red Russian kale, um, came on a lot stronger. Uh, we've got some zinnias up here and some beets that are getting nice and big, as you can see. Really pretty zinnias down there. Some more massive beets. And that's about it. I have one little lone cosmos. Now what's really amazing about this hygge culture bed is the mushroom compost that I used actually contains herbicides, which I didn't know, of course, when I planted it. I actually sourced organic compost thinking that I would be safe, and so I spent extra money doing that. Yet I noticed herbicide damage on some tomatoes and cosmos in some of my container gardens. As you can see, this tomato right here is not looking hot at all. And I was so confused as to what was going on, and then I noticed the signs of herbicide damage. So you can tell here, this little plant had some herbicide damage, but it's growing out of it. So I am thinking that it's a small amount, but what's amazing is the herbicide damage did not show up in the hygge culture bed. It only showed up in my containers. So it makes me think that when you have a small trace of herbicides in a container, it's just too concentrated for the plants. You spread it out in a larger area and you have some other soil and stuff going on, the plants can kind of escape it and get by a little bit more. So I'm really amazed that despite some herbicides in the compost, despite it being its first year, this thing is mostly wood, to be honest. It's not the thickest layer of soil on top. I'm really shocked. I'm completely shocked at the success of this hygge culture bed. And to be honest, it's become my new favorite way to garden and I wanna put hygge culture beds all around the food forest because it's amazing for drainage. It heats up really quick. It's pretty much no work once you get it in place. Little to no weeding. It's easy to access. I don't have to lean down as far. It's beautiful. It looks like a little forest. Uh, it's permaculture, it's natural, and I get to use materials around our farm that we wouldn't otherwise be using. So really, really, really happy. Could not be happier with the hygge culture bed. The one thing I will mention is that because of the wood chips and all the wood and all the lush stuff going on here, I am noticing a lot of bugs. There's a lot of bugs in this area, but both good and bad bugs. And they're kind of taking care of each other. The past damage is minimal. I haven't really used anything. Um, so overall, really really happy 100 percent recommend hugo culture even if you're looking for success in your first year just be wise about what you plant in it and uh, where you source your compost and i think you'll be really good to go so i'm really happy to share this update because i had no idea what to expect and i'm really glad i get to share it with you and show you the success that we've had in just the first month i can't wait to share with you how this continues to do in the rest of the season and um, going into the next few years